Now, moving on to our next story, India and China held in-person diplomatic talks in New Delhi on Wednesday. Both sides discussed disengagement at the remaining friction points along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh. The troops are locked in an over three-year confrontation at certain points. Even as the two sides completed disengagement from several areas following the diplomatic and military-level talks. The 19th round of high-level military talks will be held at an early date to achieve the objective of restoration of peace and tranquility in the border areas. The Indian Foreign Ministry said both sides discussed proposals for disengagement in a frank and open manner. The ministry added restoration of peace and tranquility will create conditions for normalizing bilateral relations. The key meeting took place under the framework of a working mechanism for consultation and coordination on India-China border affairs. Now, the previous framework meeting was held in Beijing on the 22nd of February. The Indian delegation was led by the Foreign Ministry's Joint Secretary for East Asia. The other side was led by the Director General of Boundary and Oceanic Affairs, Department of the Chinese Foreign Ministry. Remember, the 18th round of high-level military talks between the two sides was held on the 23rd of April. As per the Telegraph, the Chinese army demanded the creation of a 15 to 20 kilometer buffer zone inside India claimed lines on the strategic Depsung Plain. Quoting an official from the Indo-Tibetan border police, the report said that India rejected the demand and instead agreed to a three to four kilometer buffer zone. Back then, both sides had agreed to stay in close touch and to work out a mutually acceptable solution to the remaining issues in eastern Ladakh at the earliest. Days later, Chinese Defense Minister Li Shangfu visited India to attend a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. On the sidelines of the SCO meeting, Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh held a nearly 45-minute bilateral meeting with Li Shangfu. The Indian Defence Minister stated China's violation of the existing border agreements eroded the entire basis of ties. On the 4th of May, the Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar conveyed to his Chinese counterpart Quin Gang the importance of resolving the border row. A day after the talks, Jay Shankar said that the situation along the border in eastern Ladakh is abnormal. He added, India-China relations cannot be normal if the peace and tranquility in the border areas is disturbed. The eastern Ladakh border standoff erupted on the 5th of May of 2020, following a violent clash in the Pangong Lake area. The ties between the two countries nosedived significantly following the fierce clash in the Galwan Valley, in June of 2020. The 2020 clash marked the most serious military conflict between the two sides in decades. The two sides completed the disengagement process in 2021 on the north and south banks of the Pangong Lake in the Gogra area as well. Now for more on this, we have with us the Air Marshal P.K. Barbora PBSM, VM, and former vice chief of the air staff. Thank you for being with us. Now, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, has asked his troops to prepare for a war. And the two countries that China could possibly go for a war with is Taiwan and India. But there is a feeling that Beijing may not physically attack Taipei considering that it won't attack its own people in Taiwan. So what are the chances that China will go to war with India? How do you see the tensions escalating between Beijing and New Delhi? Well, firstly, let me thank you for having invited me over for this very interesting chat. But uh, I would like to start by saying that let us not put unnecessary fear in the minds of Indians by saying war, war, war. War, physical war, with weapon systems of the nature of the last decade, till the last decade, is gone of the past, okay? 
yes, we have got Ukraine going and Russia going, etc. But a full-fledged war, I don't visualize. Now, why has this thing happened? Now, if you go back to history, and I'm not talking of recent history, I'm talking of the formation of the world per se. Now, look at our full northeast, look at even Ladakh and Kashmir area. Northeast is more prominent where they have got claims. And a war can start when you are claiming something which is not yours and the other party is saying you can't take it. Now, very seriously, if you look at the population of the whole of Northeast, compare them, their looks, their physique, etc., compare them with those in, say, old Burma or China. They have got more similarity than what we have, we in India, in the center of India, with the Northeast or even with the far North. So China, as far as geography was concerned, had a lot of influence along our border in specified places mm -hmm. of their interest, right, right from history. No one seems to talk about that. I don't know why. But of course, as time has passed, India has its own reasons for the claims. And uh, we shall continue to hold our ground. But a full-scale war, in my opinion, is doubtful, very doubtful. Right. Now, the latest warning by Xi Jinping, where he talks about the situation being complex, do you think it comes against China's deteriorating economic situation and other domestic issues? I will put it this way. Who can tell us accurately what is China's deteriorating situation as far as the economy is concerned? We haven't even found out where the COVID virus started. We can't. China is the old USSR with an iron fence all around it, with people getting no correct information. Yes, you can measure it through other sources, export, import, etc. but they are very good at hiding. You see, we can't even look into a five-year plan in our own country. They talk of a 50-year plan, and in their plan of 50 years, all these things exist, whether they apply force, or they go through peacefulness, but they will keep pushing us, keep pushing us like they have pushed the other 15 neighbors that it has and try and influence, influence them upon the China policy. And let us see what happens then. But war like scenario because of other countries which exist in this world, which is one world for all of us. I have my great, great doubts. Mm. Absolutely. Air Marshal Babora, thank you very much for being with us on this broadcast and your valued insights on the latest. Thank you.